Oh my god, four seasons are looking so good. We've got Chainsaw Man, Mob, Bleach. We've got so many shows, so much to talk about. I can't wait to make the full anime season video. It's still technically four for two more weeks, right guys? Okay. I know the seasonal rundown is a little later than usual, but to be fair, I was a bit preoccupied in October. Touring America is fun, but you know, after six weeks of driving all over the states, doing shows in 22 different cities, living my life out of a bus, eating far too many hamburgers, I am america out. I just need to forget about the US for a bit, alright? I need the most un-American thing on this anime chart right now. Chainsaw Man! Wait, no, this has got a bunch of American movie references. My Hero Academia? <laughs> Fuck no. Akiba Maid Wars. All right, here we go. There's nothing more Japanese than idol concerts and maid cafes, all right? Now we're the furthest we can possibly be from American culture. <sighs> oh, say can you see? Alright guys, you know how it is. Boksu is my favorite Japanese snack box. I talk about this every month. They are the premium Japanese snack box that sources snacks from all over Japan. Working with family businesses from all over the country to send you a new theme of goodies every month. And you know, I'm gonna be honest, since I've been traveling America for six weeks, I have missed Japanese foods and Japanese snacks. So I'm actually really happy I've got a Boksu right now. Look at all this, look at that. When you first become a Boksu subscriber, the first box you will receive is called Season of Japan, which is the box I have here, giving you a small little taste of what's to come because after that, each month will be a different themed box. Each box is completely packed and also comes with a booklet that teaches you all about the snacks, unique flavors, and where they come from. Or as you can see, I'm in the office and I haven't had dinner yet, so I'm absolutely starving. So I'm going to try some uni rice crackers. So let's see how these are going to taste. Oh my god. Ah. Oh. This is hitting the spot. This is so good. All right, let's try something sweet after that. This one caught my eye. This is a white strawberry. I love strawberries, so let's see how this one tastes. Mmm, goddamn. This is so good. Honestly, those snacks were great. So if you want to give a gift to any travel lover, anime lover, or food in your life, Boksu is the perfect gift. So, what are you waiting for? If you want some Boksu in your life, click the link in the description and use code GIGUK15 for $15 off your first purchase. Thank you very much to Boksu for sponsoring us today, and back to the video. <laughs> Let's start things off with an isekai! Wait, 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 hold on, I swear to god, this is alright, I swear! I don't know if I'm enjoying the show too much or just the right amount. This show is simultaneously the edgiest try-hard isekai junk, yet so dumb and ridiculous that it parodies the isekai genre itself. I mean, just look at this main character. We've got another Kirito-looking edgelord that's super OP and gets all the chicks, right? Right. Except he spends all his time trying to be a side character only to fail and be the protagonist. His superpower isn't his magic or black goo, it's whatever dumb shit he comes up with on the spot is true and has been true the entire time. The dude is Isekai Haruhi and seeing a man completely bullshit his way through an Isekai is just the edgy dumb fun I need in my life. Ooh, a fresh pie. Save me a slice. That's good. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's... All right, that's good. Okay, okay. All right, okay, all right. Okay, that's good. That's good. It's... It's enough slices! Now, if you're a seasoned anime fan, you are in for an absolute treat right now because this is the season of amazing... No, not you. Fucking sequels. Spike's Family is continuing to be one of the hottest new anime this year. Mob Psycho Season 3 showcasing some of the best animation the medium has ever seen. To Your Eternity, coming back to give more tears. I said not you! My Hero Academia hitting us with its best arc in a while. Pop Team Epic carrying on its insanity. We got more Golden Kamui, more Irumakun. Bleach is back, baby. Now, I know this is a series that meant a lot to many people, but you know, just because it's Bleach doesn't mean it's going to be a guaranteed banger. So, you know, let's all just try to calm down and keep our hype in check going into this. So, baby, go! <laughs> go! <laughs> yes! Yes! Yeah, it was right. Okay, I've been vocal about my criticisms of Bleach over the years. Post Soul Society and Aaron Car arc, it was my least favorite of the big three. I really do think latter parts of the manga took a nosedive in quality, but I'd be lying if I didn't say it feels 
fucking good to see the squad back again. Like, I thought I was going to keep it together, and then that one song came on. You know the song. You know the song. You know what I'm talking about. The one that's like, so baby, now you feel like number one. Shining bright for everyone. <laughs> I'm gonna have a kid and I'm gonna be like, Son, let me regale you with the songs of my childhood. If you wanna see some action. <laughs> God, I miss Bleach. Nostalgia goggles aside though, Bleach has never looked this good. They are pulling out all the stops. In the manga, I felt this last arc was a little rushed, but with Kubo actually being involved in production, this might not just be an opportunity to see Bleach once again, but there might be a chance it could also improve on some of the manga's shortcomings. <laughs> From the creators of Re... Creators comes whatever the fuck this show is. You got an average guy, good at gymnastics. <laughs> has a cool anchor and a hot tomato. Starts his first day at school and he's like, What do we say to the god of Isekai? <laughs> Not today. Next day, he gets confessu, gets a girlfriend, jackpot. Goes on the first date, she immediately invites him back to her place. Double jackpot. They're doing Netflix and chill. She takes her top off, climbs on top of him, and he's like, What do we say to the god of bitches? Not ever. Ninja Clan. Roll credits. That's episode one. Honestly, this just seems like dumb fun. Do you hate fun? Why do people hate fun? This is why not enough people watch recreators. Stop hating fun. Hey, what's that? Is that a Gundam? Gundam. 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 Gun. What are you guys doing? Watching Neon Genesis Evangelion? Since before I'm sure a lot of us were even born, Gundam has been pretty much the face of giant robots, leading the mecha industry to the modern day, but unfortunately, it's not exactly the easiest franchise to get into. It's been seven years, seven years since the last newbie-friendly Gundam, so there's probably a decent chunk of new anime fans who's never even seen a single Gundam, which is why we've desperately needed a show like Gundam The Witch from Mercury. Not only is this a new original story not related to previous franchises, but it looks fantastic Fantastic. Sounds fantastic. There are actually 2D mechs. I repeat, there are 2D mechs. And the prologue alone is a goddamn short movie that hits like a truck. This is the Gundam I've been waiting for. This is the Gundam we've needed. This is the most excited I've been for a mecha show in years. So if you haven't seen a Gundam before, if you've never watched a mecha show before, now is the time to start. Because you can't spell Gundam without Gundam, and you can't spell Lee Sky without IC Slavery. Guy? Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Alright, I know having a guy reincarnate as a sword might make it look like we're just running out of isekai ideas, and we're just going with any old gimmick at this point, but hold on, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hear me out. You're absolutely right. Okay, though, for real, the sword isekai is actually surprisingly decent with some interesting ideas for an isekai show. I mean, for one, they actually free the slaves instead of buying them. Nice to see we're finally making strides in the fantasy genre because next we have Beast Tamers, a nice little wholesome fantasy show about a guy who tames beast girls. Let's see what this is about. Wait a minute. This is just repackaged slavery! Speaking of taming, we've got another villainous isekai. This time, the protagonist gets isekai into the body of an otome game villainess called Eileen. But she's not gonna try and romance any of the male heroes, no, no. This time she goes for the Sigma male demon lord himself. And so begins this elongated adventure of her trying to convince the big daddy sexy demon lord to- I like this one. It's no secret I'm not the biggest fan of cute girls do cute things, but every once in a while a show in the genre just grabs me for a reason my brain still can't comprehend. And for whatever reason, Do It Yourself is doing just that for me. The art style isn't just your copy-paste Moe Bob bubblegum style, the vibes are on points, this is like if Azerken decided to make Ikea furniture. I will say though, the anime really wants you to know that the main character's name is Yua Sedofu. Yua. And the anime is called Do It Yourself? Huh? Get it? Huh? Huh? Who? Cares. What's next? Bochi. The Rock. Looks like we've got more cute girls doing cute things this season. This time a bunch of them are making a band, guys! Something we've not seen done since K-On! Or K-On Season 2! Or K-On The Movie! Or K-On But Shit!
I'm not gonna lie. This one actually looks good too. Slice of Life fans be eating good this season, and it looks like there's gonna be a real focus on music and performances too. They've done a good job of making this not feel like a K-On clone, because it's a different vibe, different setting, and the main girl is so socially awkward, she makes Komi-san look like Tyler One. So really, it's K-R. Ah! She just like me for real! Who? There's a new anime where the story is, um... Um... What the dog doing? Bibliophile princess. I love books. We got a story about some noble's daughter who's a book nerd from the kingdom of... Sourceland? Sourceland? Dustland? Being set up in an arranged marriage she's got no interest in. Why does she agree to it? Well, she gets access to their library with thousands of books, of course. Now, if you've never read a book, it's kind of similar to anime, except unlike anime, there are no visuals, but the story unfolds in the magical place of your mind that opens up your imagination to infinite possibilities. And also here it gets you bitches. Okay, I'm now convinced Domestic Girlfriend and Renter Girlfriend have broken something in me. This actually seems like it has potential to be a great romance anime. The art style is gorgeous. The use of the different coloured outlines in places gives it a really unique aesthetic. The dynamic between the main duo is really cute and there's even a little twist to the formula. With a schooling system that pairs students up for mock marriages leading to love triangles galore. This has all the ingredients for a great romance anime and I know this. And I see this. But I look at this now and I'm like, vanilla romance? Cringe. Listen to me, the spice must flow. You know what else is cringe? Fucking maid cafes, am I right? <laughs> Uh-oh. I'ma say it. PA Works is doing some weird fucking shit recently, and I love it. Ancient Chinese strategist reincarnated into the modern day Shibuya to become a manager of a singer? Nah, not weird enough. How about a homage to old school Yakuza movie in Gang Wars, except let's replace all the Yakuza with maid cafes and have the Gang Wars take place in the streets of Akihabara. <laughs> Got red on you. Everyone involved absolutely understands their assignments. You can tell the people behind this are having so much fun and it shines through. This series is as insane as it is a joy to watch. It's funny, dark, and brilliantly satirical. And if this keeps up, it might just do the impossible. Get me to actually go to a maid cafe again. One poor water. Water for one. Ah yes, finally a sports protagonist I can get behind. Ball might. All right, be honest. How many times have you seen a sports anime and it's like, oh, teamwork, guys. Let's get to nationals with the power of friendship. Friendship. Get that shit out of here. We got bloody football squid game up in here and it's all about being selfish, egotistical, greedy. Fuck teamwork, fuck friendship. Japan's making their own Zlatan Ibrahimovic. That's fucking football right there. None of that pansy ass dick tugging, faking your injury bullshit. Men puke, men poop on the pitch. Men deliver their newborn babies on the touchlines. Fucking hardcore dick and ass tiki tucker football. Fuck it, take it to extra time shit. Clutch it in the 90th minute. Score a 30 yard screamer because this is the beautiful game. Football is back, baby. So I was thinking about pulling for Naida and Naida? What's that? Oh, it's the character from Genshin Impact. Do you play Genshin Impact? I mean, I guess. Can you say that again for me? Say what? I play Genshin Impact. I play Genshin Impact? <laughs> we got him, boys! This man plays Genshin Impact! <laughs> there she is. I can't believe in 2022 I get to see the original hot anime girl. The legendary primordial waifu herself. Lum. Who? Urusei Yatsura is a classic anime from the 70s coming from the legendary Rumiko Takahashi that is arguably the beginning of waifu culture itself. Before Asuka and Rei, before Rem, before Asuna, before Zero Two, there was... Zero One. Lum is arguably the first waifu in anime, so for anyone with an OG weeb father out there, now's the perfect chance for a father-son bonding session when you go, Dad? I just lost No Not November to the same imaginary girl you did. I'm impressed at just how well they've captured the old school vibes without making it feel like it's dated. I just hope to God there's a British dub of this because if you didn't know, the BBC actually picked up a few episodes of the original Yurisei Yatsura and dubbed it in British English. I came all this way to help you. Well done, fatted. You brought tears to the eyes Get of him. the lovely lum, you bastard, you little him. shit! What do you say, Taro? Will you save the planet and all mankind? Fuck off!
All right, time for the big one. In all my years of watching anime, I've never seen a new IP get the kind of hype Chainsaw Man got. The trailers blew up on the internet. Everyone was talking about it. There were no manga readers suddenly appearing from under the nearest rock telling you this was going to be the next big thing because this time, everyone already knew it. Chainsaw Man wasn't just the most anticipated anime of the season, it was the most anticipated anime of the year. Now, did it descend from the heavens, save anime, impregnate Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and transcend the medium to give its author the levitation powers he always wanted? <laughs> No. Episode 1 could have come with free cocaine and blowjobs and it wouldn't have meant the hype it received prior to release. But what it did deliver is one of the most promising adaptations in a long time. It's a rare case when a highly beloved piece of work is given the same amount of love and resources it needs to bring it to life, but that seems to be exactly what's happening here. Even with the amount of killer IP Studio Mappa have under their belt right now, it seems like they've put their A-team into this. Chainsaw Man looks gorgeous. And I'm not just talking about the flashy action scenes. From the quietest moments, the smallest movements, every frame looks like a goddamn wallpaper. Every shot looks like it was meticulously crafted. The team didn't just try to reference Tatsuki Fujimoto's love for cinema, the entire thing feels cinematic. I mean, just look at this cinematography. She's got bonda. For real though, this isn't some surface level adaptation. You can sense the team trying their best to imbue the soul of the original work into this anime. Everyone seems to have bet and bet big on this show. We have 12 different ending songs and animations for each episode. And if you like go to the uploads on YouTube, each of the artists have commented themselves on their ending episodes and what it meant to them. Like, where the hell else do you see shit like this? Every single person seems to be excited to be working on this project. And this is the kind of love and care you can't buy with just money. This is shaping up to be a magical production. So if the story ends up being as good as the fandom says it is, it is going to be nearby impossible to find a better thing to watch this season. My only complaint is that in episode one at least, there were just a few shots where the CG looked a bit awkward. And I know a lot of people have pointed this out. All right, what's next? Yeah, the Chainsaw Man CG looks amazing. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much this month to Alpha Sigma, Basil, Dysfunctional Degenerates, Ivido, Jeff, Lavados, Misaka12315, Pain Patchett, Pony Stark, Walter Geist VT, and everyone else on my Patreon for helping to support me for this month and making this video possible. All right, I know I said it at the beginning of this video, but I'll say it again. I know this seasonal video is a little bit late, guys. This might be the latest I've ever posted a seasonal video in the season. So uh, maybe someone can tell me if it is but again i hope you understand considering i was in america for 42 days yeah i couldn't really get much other work done there but i am happy to be back in japan now and i'm happy to be in one place and not flying around or leaving my life out of a bus it's nice to actually sleep on my bed so i'm not only going to be making more content on this channel but uh i'm going to be starting my stream back up on twitch.tv slash giguk so uh yeah more genshin am i right anyway though that's it from me today nothing more to say i've been giguk and i'll see you all next time.